coming up on the Charge on Air. Boeing employees continue to strike for better contracts. An extraterrestrial being pays a visit to Space U. We take a live look at the homecoming celebrations on campus. And in sports, the Knights bring back a retro look. All right, Knights, ready your shields. The Charge on Air starts now. Welcome to the Charge On Air. I'm Giovanni St. Cern. And I'm Andrew Montana. Today is Friday, October 25th, 2024. The Boeing strike continues after workers reject a new contract. According to the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, 64% of workers voted against the contract. After a six-week strike, Boeing reported a $6.1 billion loss. One of the deals union workers are negotiating for is pension. And according to Boeing officials, there is no scenario it will return. Workers, we want to be loyal workers, we want to be competent workers, but we also believe we should be compensated for uh, the responsibilities that we do have to the community. I'm nervous now. Union leaders said that negotiations are far from over and are expected to continue until a fair deal is reached. Early voting begins here at UCF at the Live Oak Event Center. Students registered to vote can go to the polling place to update their addresses and vote in Orange County. According to the Florida, the Florida Department of State, over 2 million people have voted here in Florida, of which over 100,000 are here in Orange County. Meanwhile, pollers have set up around campus hoping to persuade students to vote. UCF alumni Victor Gonzalez Galeano is hoping to get more students to vote early to avoid long lines on Election Day. About I-4 is going to be so jam-packed if we send everybody at 8 o'clock in the morning. That's why it's, it's good that if we have to go to a certain place, we give ourselves time when we're driving on I-4. It's the same thing with early voting. We don't want to wait until the last minute. Data from the Florida Division of Elections in Politico shows roughly 39.5% of voters voted early in 2020. This dropped down to about 29.3% in 2022. The Live Oak Event Center is open to voters from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. until November 3rd. With recent storms, homelessness has been a topic of concern within local communities. According to Home Aid Orlando, Florida ranks third in the country for homeless population. House Bill 1365 was signed in March of this year and went into effect at the start of this month. The Florida legislature says this bill prohibits counties and municipalities from allowing any person to regularly camp or sleep outdoors on public property. CEO of the Homeless Services Network of Central Florida, Martha R., says the bill fails to address certain issues. So they are going outside. And we also have not ex expanded our shelter capacity in decades. So uh, people are by default, they're losing their homes. They can't move into shelters. They're out on the streets. So the legislation doesn't actually address that issue. R says Central Florida jurisdictions are looking to create other open access shelters, but that will take time. If you or someone you know is experiencing homelessness, call 211 or go to hfuw.org slash 211. UCF marks one very special birthday to kick off homecoming week. Our mascot Nitro turned 30 and we took a look back at our Knight in Shining Armor's history. In 1994, Nitro came to be after a committee was created to pick a new character mascot. Flash forward to 2008, Nitro underwent a complete redesign to the mascot that we now know and love. Nowadays, Nitro can be spotted at events across both campuses and off campus, helped by Team Nitro to bring the energy. An unusual presence has been spotted this semester. The theme for homecoming is Cowboys versus Aliens, and sources confirm that someone is already invading. This UCF alien has been seen across campus showing off his UCF pride. Several students across campus have spotted this particular alien ahead of tomorrow's invasion. Many may wonder how exactly he got here and what he's up to this weekend. The UCF alien says landing at UCF was a mistake, but he still shows up to support. I'm here because I crash landed a few years back and I decided just to go to the school because it was near where I live. My plans right now is to use all the alien people 
at UCF and help them take over the school, and then from there build an army to take over the world. The UCF alien plans on showing up on Saturday as the Knights take on BYU. UCF Homecoming is approaching its end after three days of fun and entertainment. This week, I looked into the main events on campus and found out what to expect as Homecoming comes to a close. Monday marked the beginning of Homecoming week at UCF. It started off slow as Comedy Night starring Zach Fox was canceled due to unforeseen circumstances according to the Office of Student Involvement. Fox then posted this to his Instagram story a few hours after the announcement was made. Nevertheless, the first successful activity on the slate was movie night on Tuesday in the Pegasus Ballroom. Okay. Jordan Peele's note was on display. Are you saying what I think you're saying? For students to tune into. There were also free drinks and popcorn available for students who attended. On Wednesday, UCF Downtown hosted Foam Splash. Student engagement staff member Mavrikis Bolden spoke about his experience setting up the event. So I have a, uh, I run the board here on the Downtown Student Life. So what we, we start months in advance. So in the summer, we were already planning this event. And then when the event day comes, it's just all about execution. When asked about the event management obstacles faced, Bolden said this, to which Nitro had his own objectives. It's not knowing how it's going to turn out. <laughs> I'm here at UCF downtown celebrating Foam Splash. We've got games, we've got activities, we've got a dunk tank. <laughs> Let's go check out what's going on at concert night. Last night, concert night took place at Edition Financial Arena featuring Mariah the Scientist and NLE Choppa. <laughs> UCF student Crystal Martindale spoke about her opinions on concert night and homecoming week as a whole. I think it's a good idea like having the concert and then having the big game so that's like something that we can look forward to like for the whole week as opposed to just like you know the weekend or something. Your final chance to celebrate homecoming this year is at the football game against BYU where you can dress as a cowboy or an alien. In Orlando, Andrew Montana, The Charge on Air. And before the big game, UCF hosts one of its most anticipated events of the year. Yeah, Andrew, and that big event is UCF's annual Spirit Splash. As a matter of fact, Charge on Air reporter Danielle Strong is live at the Reflection Pond. Danielle, what's it looking like out there? Hi guys, we're having a bit of a second piece, but the energy out here is ecstatic. If you look behind me, they're in the water right now. They're waiting to throw the ducks in, and we have the dance team coming out as well. So I'm probably in a couple of minutes, we're going to go really crazy out here with the ducks. Back to you guys. Danielle, what a great way to end up the homecoming activities this week. Yeah, really you. hoping sure, you, really making sure you guys bring us a duck. But anyway, thank you so much, Danielle. Coming up next, one exclusive award is helping UCF students earn hands-on learning activities. Plus, we check in with our own weather anchor, Jeremy Boland, for a quick look outside. Hey there, I'm Lance Bass, and this is Chip. For more than 100 years, American Humane has been on the front lines protecting animals in times of crisis. From Pearl Harbor to 9-11, the California wildfires, and the coronavirus pandemic, American Humane Rescue has provided life-saving assistance for animals in virtually every major national disaster. If you're anything like me, your pets mean the world to you. And if disaster strikes, you want to keep them safe. To prepare for an oncoming disaster, ensure your pet has secure and up-to-date identification. And if you must evacuate, remember to take your disaster preparedness kit with you. 
To learn more about disaster planning and how to keep your best friends safe, please visit AmericanHumane.org. UCF is strengthening its academic and research programs with an organizational change. The School of Modeling, Simulation, and Training, also known as SMST, is now part of the College of Engineering and Computer Science. The Charge on Air reporter Brianna Howard gives us details on what to expect. In a major shift aimed to advance research and academic programs, UCF School of Modeling, Simulation and Training has officially become part of the College of Engineering and Computer Science. This integration strengthens collaborations between departments, opening new doors for innovation and student opportunities. Professor Guy Thrabati, the interim director of SMST, explains how this change will benefit both faculty and students. The rationale there is engineering is a large college, a strong academic uh, college that will give the school and our programs a tremendous advantage in terms of uh, getting exposure, uh, recruiting students, collaborating with, with faculty. Established over 20 years ago, SMST has been a leader in developing simulation models for everything from military training to healthcare systems. With more than 550 graduate degrees awarded since 2018, the school has already made a national impact. The School of Modeling, Simulation and Training joining the College of Engineering and Computer Science is seen as a positive thing by both faculty and students here at UCF. With this school joining a more prestigious College of Engineering, students now have access to more resources and opportunities. I spoke to senior computer engineering major Tommy Waluko and he shares with me his excitement for the future. Well, I think that that's fantastic for the school to be joining uh, CECS because I'm looking to graduate soon and it really expands the pool of graduate programs that I'm going to be looking at post-graduation. Students currently enrolled at the School of Modeling, Simulation and Training won't see major changes to their curriculum, but the new structure offers them a unique opportunity. For UCF, it's a step towards becoming a national leader in technology and research innovation. In Orlando, I'm Brian Howard, The Charge on Air. With this new partnership between M SMST and the College of Engineering, UCF continues to push the boundaries of research and education, providing students with more opportunities in fast-growing industries. For more information, visit ucf.edu. The Academics Health Science Center was honored with an award by the Association of Schools Advancing Health Professions for its hands-on student learning. UCF's Health Science Center integrates different aspects of education and hands-on training. Students have the opportunity to do clinicals and travel to help communities alongside healthcare professionals around the world. Biomedical science major Janelle Charles is the mentorship director for the Pre-Medical Student Association. She talked about the hands-on learning experience she gained by traveling to Peru and working with healthcare professionals around that community. Because I got to help the physician write down the scripts. I got to help the pharmacist put the medications in the back. It's an interesting experience to see how hands-on I, I was in a country that you know I'm not I'm not from. Because of the experience that I got, I don't believe I could get it anywhere else. Charles said her interest grew in pediatric neurosurgery as it hits home from her love for kids and the unfortunate passing of her grandmother from dementia. According to the Comprehensive Medical Care Outreach Team, more than 1,200 students in the last five years have served over 700 patients, providing essential health care services while learning in a live clinical environment. Now, Giovanni, it's been pretty cool over the last few days, don't you think? Yeah, Andrew, it's the perfect weather for playing basketball and football outside. Ooh, okay, I don't know about playing basketball outside because those double runs got me wanting to play <laughs> inside, but let's find out if the breeze will last with our uh, weather anchor, Jeremy Boland. You know, guys, it is going to be a very good day to play basketball today, and if you're attending the of, uh, homecoming football game tomorrow, it's going to be exceptional weather, so be prepared for that. But let's talk current conditions. So right now it's about 83 degrees, and humidity is making it feel slightly warmer outside, roughly around 4 degrees. So it'll be around 88, even close to 90. 
outside has a 55% humidity and you know 40 is pretty normal so if you go outside right now it might be a little sticky as well as let's talk about the UV index. The UV index right now is six. So you wanna keep the sunscreen on hand cause you know you wanna look good for those holiday photos coming up. Talking about the wind, right now it's around five miles per hour but with gusts pushing upwards of 10. So you might experience a little bit of frizz if you go outside. That's all the time I have, back to you guys. Thank you, Jeremy. Now coming up after the break, we'll get a quick look at the national weather forecast with our partners from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Stick with us to see more. When we have the food we need, we are at our best. We push further. We rise higher. We unlock our full potential. When we are at our best, we have more to offer the world around us. When we have the food we need, we make our communities stronger. Together, we can help everyone get the food they need to thrive. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. I was a quarterback at Hardaway High School. College first round draft pick on and off the field. We were taught to not show any signs of weakness. During the football season, I would stop eating. But I didn't know I was depressed. I thought that something was wrong with me. For 20 plus years, it was physical, physical, physical. We didn't have any education behind what mental health was. I started to learn it starts here first. If this is together, I'll be better as a father, as a man, and as a husband. Put the importance on your mental health. I'm not scared to talk about it anymore. The first tool is therapy. The second one is positive self-talk. And then journaling, putting your thoughts on paper. We have to redefine what being a strong man is and heal, love, your mind. Let's check in real quick with Derek Centrone from Embry-Riddle Embry Aeronautical University for our national forecast. A very quiet end of the week here. Some rain over the Great Lakes region eventually pushing into New England, but this will give way to some nice fall weather. Here is that cold front that this rain is going to be pushing along, eventually becoming a little bit more scattered and bringing in that cold air. Definitely still at least one last weekend of getting these fall temperatures before we do start to move more into the winter. A little bit of a different story up here in the Pacific Northwest. This river of moisture just flowing straight into the Seattle area. This could elevate your rain potential into uh, this weekend, eventually moving more towards the mountains and causing some potential snow risk into next week. Um, looking down at the southeast, a completely different story here. Very high temperatures, unseasonably high, even potentially record-breaking um, with some of these temperatures here in Atlanta, into Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee. That's where you're not going to see fall letting up anytime soon, maybe even a little bit of summer left before winter starts to set in. Thank you, Derek. Now let's check in with our very own weather anchor, Jeremy Boland, for a quick look at the local forecast. All right, guys, let's talk our local weather forecast. So right now, if we look up here in Gainesville, it's around 83 degrees. And then if we move over here to Palm Coast, we're at 82. Now going down to Central Florida, we have Leesburg at 83. And then over here in downtown, downtown Orlando, we're also at 83. And we see that trend continue over here in Winter Haven and in Tampa. Now, if we go all the way over here to Melbourne, they're over at 82, which isn't too bad, overall cool. Now let's get into our five-day forecast. If we take a look at our five day forecast, if you look at Saturday, the high is going to be 84 degrees with the low of 64 and a 0% chance of rain. Moving on to Sunday, it's going to be 83 degrees as the high and 62 for the low, also with a 0% chance of rain. Moving over to Monday and Tuesday, we see a slight shift. 
you see we have an 80 degree for the high on both days. For Monday, the low is going to be 65, and for Tuesday, the low is going to be 66. But if we go over to the rain, on Monday, there's going to be a 15% chance of rain, and on Tuesday, there's going to be a 40% chance of rain. Moving over to Wednesday, we have the high at 83 and the low at 69 with a 0% chance of rain. So we'll make a slight recovery in towards the middle of the week, but that seems to be all the time I have for you guys right now on weather. I'm going to toss it back to my homies at the desk. Thank you, Jeremy. Knights Volleyball gets a blast from the past in their alumni game. Plus, ahead of the season, uh, the women's basketball team plays in its first exhibition game. The men's golf team ends its season with a trip down south. We've got all that and more for you right after this break. I don't remember how it started. He said it was like, yeah, he went to the party for Our back and forth. Wait, Victory. Is Fumble. Repeat. It always came back. <laughs> Dad! Okay, here we go, throw it! <laughs> yeah. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Nice. For decades, I've taught you everything I know. How to safely build a fire. How to control the flames. <laughs> what to do with hot coals. How to secure your chains. But I can only teach wildfire prevention. Only you can prevent wildfires. Happy homecoming nights. I'm Brianna Howard. Tomorrow is UCF's homecoming game. I'm excited and I hope you guys are too. The Knights take on number 11 ranked BYU Cougars at 3.30 p.m. in the FBC Mortgage Stadium. The rest of UCF's season is against Big 12 opponents in which UCF is currently 1-3. The Knights look to break a four-game losing streak and give BYU its first loss of the season. Now for men's golf, the UCF golf team ends their fall season at the FAU Invitational in the PGA National. The team's best performance was in the Ironwood Collegiate Classic where they finished fourth. Chase Haygood and Lucas Ducatre were the best two tournament players with five rounds under par for the season. The team will be back in spring on February 3rd at the CBEST Invitational. A blast from the past makes a comeback on the field this weekend for Saturday's homecoming game. Take a look at your screen. Our UCF alums might recognize this classic UCF logo used in past games from the 90s. These somewhat new helmets feature an all gold exterior with black accents and the classic UCF Knights logo. The original helmet serves the Knights from 1996 all the way until 2002. The Knights will be heading against the BYU Cougars this Saturday with kickoff at 3.30 p.m. This game's theme is fans' choice, so maybe ask alumni around you for some old merch and you may be able to match the retro vibes the Knights will be repping this game.
Tonight at 7 p.m., UCF Volleyball will be hosting their annual alumni game against Houston. The game will take place in the venue and highlight the 2014 women's volleyball team. Head coach Jenny Moorer confirms multiple alums will be attending. The 2014 team went 25-8 for the season as well as 18-2 in conference play. The Knights were so good that they made it to the NCAA championship. They unfortunately lost in the championship to the University of Miami 2-3. The UCF women's basketball team will start their preseason on Tuesday, the 29th. The first game will be an exhibition against Edward Waters University inside Addition Financial Arena. During the offseason, the team recruited two new coaches, Michelle McLeod and Reagan McHugh. Last year, the team finished 12-17 and overall and 3-15 and in the conference. The regular season will start on November 5th versus Iona at home. That's all the time we have for sports this week. Back to you, Giovanni and Andrew at the desk. Thank you, Rihanna. Now that's all the time we have for right now. Thank you all so much for joining us. And remember, you can always keep up with us during the week on our website, thechargenews.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.